OpenAI's super alignment team has just dropped their first research paper, and here's what it says. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday, Greg Brockman tweeted new direction for AI alignment, weak to strong generalization, promising initial results. We used outputs from a weak model, a fine-tuned GPT-2, to communicate a task to a stronger model, GPT-4, resulting in intermediate GPT-3-level performance. So what is Greg talking about? Why is this important? What does it have to do with the robots not killing us? Well, to understand what's going on, let's go back to the summer when OpenAI introduced their super alignment team. Their announcement blog post reads, We need scientific and technical breakthroughs to steer and control AI systems much smarter than us. To solve this problem within four years, we're starting a new team and dedicating 20% of the compute we've secured to date to this effort. So basically, this is not a team that was focused on how to align the current crop of models. This is a team that's focused on superintelligence. Superintelligence, OpenAI argues, will be the most impactful technology humanity has ever invented and could help us solve many of the world's most important problems. But the vast power of superintelligence could also be very dangerous and could lead to the disempowerment of humanity or even human extinction. While superintelligence seems far off now, we believe it could arrive this decade. Managing these risks will require, among other things, new institutions for governance and solving the problem of superintelligence alignment. How do we ensure AI systems much smarter than humans follow human intent? Currently, we don't have a solution for steering or controlling a potentially superintelligent AI and preventing it from going rogue. Our current techniques for aligning AI, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback, rely on humans' ability to supervise AI. But humans won't be able to reliably supervise AI systems much smarter than us, and so our current alignment techniques will not scale to superintelligence. We need new scientific and technical breakthroughs. Now, even back then, they said that their goal was to build a roughly human-level automated alignment researcher. They said we can then use vast amounts of compute to scale our efforts and iteratively align superintelligence. To align the first automated alignment researcher, we will need to 1. Develop a scalable training method, 2. Validate the resulting model, and 3. Stress test our entire pipeline. Now, there are a couple things that were notable about this announcement at the time. One was the scale of its ambition. They had set a four-year timeline to solve the core technical challenges of superintelligence alignment, which made observant spectators kind of wonder how fast they think superintelligence is actually going to arrive. But on top of that, they also showed up with resources to do so. That 20% of the compute that they had secured to date commitment was certainly not nothing. Finally, they were bringing in some big hitters. Notably, Ilya, the co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, was going to be leading this team, along with Jan Leakey, who's the head of alignment. Now, Ilya leading the superintelligence alignment team was part of why people thought that perhaps the whole OpenAI board Sam Altman fight had to do with some technical breakthrough, given that Ilya had initially not supported Sam. Now, at this stage, we don't currently know what Ilya's long-term status with OpenAI is going to be. By all accounts, it is still up in the air. However, in spite of that, this new announcement is the first time that we've seen what they've been working on. So, the co-lead of the super alignment team, Jan Leakey, writes, Super excited about our new research direction for aligning smarter than human AI. We fine-tune large models to generalize from weak supervision, using small models instead of humans as weak supervisors. Jan continues, For lots of important tasks, we don't have ground truth supervision. Is this statement true? Is this code buggy? We want to elicit the strong model's capabilities on these tasks without access to ground truth. This is pretty central to aligning superhuman models. We find that large models generally do better than their weak supervisor, a smaller model, but not by much. This suggests reward models won't be much better than their human supervisors. In other words, RLHF won't scale. But even our simple technique can significantly improve weak to strong generalization. This is great news. We can make measurable progress on this problem today. I believe more progress in this direction will help us align superhuman models. Now, Colin Burns takes this explanation a little bit further. And apparently, according to a shout out from Sam Altman, it was actually Colin who inspired this line of research and convinced the whole team to go down this path. Colin writes, Humans won't be able to supervise models smarter than us. For example, if a superhuman model generates a million lines of extremely complicated code, we won't be able to tell if it's safe to run or not, if it follows our instructions or not, and so on. This is a key difficulty of aligning superhuman models. Unlike in most of machine learning, we will need to supervise models smarter than us. Despite its importance, it's not obvious how to even begin to empirically study this issue. We propose a simple, simple analogy to study this problem today. Can we use weak models to supervise strong models? If we can learn superhuman reward models or safety classifiers from weak supervision, that would be a huge advancement for super alignment. So editors note here, basically the technique that they're taking is humans in this analogy are playing the role of the weak model, the GPT-2, whereas superintelligence is taking the role of the strong model or GPT-4. Now back to Colin, he writes, 
Intuitively, this may be feasible because the strong model should already be very capable at the key alignment relevant tasks we care about. All the weak supervisor needs to do is elicit key capabilities that already exist within the strong model. We empirically test this setup and find that if we fine tune a strong pre trained model using weak model supervision, it consistently outperforms the weak model, usually by a large margin. Generalization appears to be a promising approach to alignment. But directly fine tuning a big model to imitate a small model is suboptimal. Intuitively, we want to nudge the generalization towards outputting what it internally knows. We test a simple model for doing this that makes the strong model more confident in its predictions. Across a large number of datasets, this simple method drastically improves weak to strong generalization performance. On our NLP tasks, we can fine tune GPT 4 using a GPT 2 level supervisor and attain performance close to GPT 3.5. There's still a huge amount of work to be done in this setting. Our methods still don't always work well, for example, performance isn't as good on our ChatGPT preference dataset, and our setup still has disanalogies with the future alignment problems we care about. But we can make rapid iterative empirical progress on this problem today. Our setup is simple, general, and easy to try out and there is still a huge amount of low-hanging fruit. Alignment feels more solvable than ever before. Now, another member of the team, Leopold Aschenbrenner, tries to explain this in more lay terms that I think are useful as well. Leopold writes, Intuitively, superhuman AI systems should know if they're acting safely, but can we summon such concepts from strong models with only weak supervision? Incredibly excited to finally share what we've been working on, weak to strong generalization. Future AI systems will be able to do crazy complicated things, e.g. generate 1 million lines of code. We'll want to add side constraints to their behavior, like don't lie or don't escape your server. But how do we do that if we can't even fully understand what they're doing? Normally, we train AI systems with human labels. But relative to AI systems much smarter than us, humans will be weak supervisors. Maybe we can supervise them on easy problems, but on hard problems, we'll only be able to provide incomplete or flawed labels. But there's reason to be optimistic. Concepts like, is this action dangerous, should already be saliently internally represented by strong models. Can we just get them to tell us what they know, even about the cases too difficult for us to supervise directly? We have a really neat setup to study this. What happens when we use a small model to supervise a large model? Will the strong model just imitate the weak supervisor, including its errors, or will the strong model generalize beyond to the underlying task or concept? It turns out, we can often nudge deep learning's remarkable generalization properties to work in our favor, even when we use GPT-2, which can barely count to 10, to supervise GPT-4, which aces high school tests, we can often recover 80% of the performance we would get with perfect labels. Now this only works in some settings so far, and naive weak supervision without methods is far from recovering full performance. In that sense, we provide evidence that naively applying current alignment techniques like RLHF will scale poorly to superhuman models. But this feels like a super tractable problem. Generalizing beyond weak supervisors is a widespread phenomenon, and we can drastically improve generalization with simple methods. There's tons of low-hanging fruit here. There are exciting directions for future work, better methods, scientific understanding, when and why do we see good generalization, analogous setups. There are still important disanalogies between our setup and the future superalignment problem. Can we fix it? Perhaps what I find most exciting, we can make iterative empirical progress today on a core challenge of aligning future superhuman models. Lots of prior alignment work has been stuck in theory or been empirical, but failed to confront core challenges head on. But the question, of course, becomes how to get people to work on those problems. Well, in addition to continuing their work with the super alignment team, OpenAI has also announced alongside Eric Schmidt, a $10 million program they're calling Super Alignment Fast Grants. This is a $10 million pot they say for, quote, technical research on aligning superhuman AI systems, including weak to strong generalization, interpretability, scalable oversight, and more. Basically, this $10 million is divided into 100 k to $2 million grants for academic labs, nonprofits, and individual researchers. For graduate students, they're sponsoring a one-year 150 k OpenAI Super Alignment Fellowship, which includes 75 k in stipend and 75 k in compute and research funding. And importantly, they say that no prior experience working on alignment is required. They want this to be a pipeline in for researchers to start working on alignment. Now, what are they looking to fund? They say they're particularly interested in the following research directions. One, weak to strong generalizations everything we've just been talking about. Two, interpretability. How can we understand model internals? And can we use this to e.g. build an AI lie detector? Scalable oversight. How can we use AI systems to assist humans in evaluating the outputs of other AI systems on complex tasks? And then finally, many other research directions, including but not limited to honesty, chain of thought faithfulness, adversarial robustness, avals and testbeds, and more. You can apply to get these grants until February 18th. So how are people receiving this? The MIT Technology Review says, Unlike many of the company's announcements, this heralds no big breakthrough. In a low-key research paper, the team describes a technique that lets a less powerful LLM supervise a more powerful one and suggests that this might be a small step towards figuring out how humans might supervise superhuman machines. 
Now, they also got commentary from a number of different AI researchers, including Tilo Hagendorf, who wrote, it is an interesting idea, but he told MIT he thinks that GPT-2 might be too dumb to be a good teacher. Quote, GPT-2 tends to give nonsensical responses to any task that is slightly complex or requires reasoning. Continuing the MIT Technology Review writes, he also notes that this approach does not address Ilya Sutskever's hypothetical scenario in which a superintelligence hides its true behavior and pretends to be aligned when it isn't. Says Hagendorf, future superhuman models will likely possess emergent abilities which are unknown to researchers. How can alignment work in these cases? Still, even for the skeptics, the broad sense is that this is valuable progress being made. Now, OpenAI also on the same day dropped another research paper that they summed up as identifying seven practices for keeping increasingly agentic AI systems safe and accountable as they become more common and more capable. Alongside this, they also announced research grants for a range of open questions in this area. Now, I'm not going to get fully into this paper as well, but what strikes me as notable is that this is two fairly significant research papers around questions of AI safety and AI alignment, right at a time when people are speculating that GPT 4.5 is around the corner. I would say only that it doesn't not make sense to me that in advance of releasing the most advanced model ever, you would drop all of the progress that you've made on safety and alignment issues to try to make it feel as though those things were progressing at the same speed the overall capabilities were. I think this is a little less tinfoil hat and a little more just my PR and marketing brain observing something that I could see doing. I will note that after Sam Altman called out Colin Burns for his work on this issue, when someone asked him GPT 4.5 leak legit or no, he said nah to which everyone scrambled to figure out if he was denying the pricing screenshot or that GPT 4.5 is coming this month. At the time of recording, still no answer on that front, but the speculation and rumors live on. Overall, my favorite comment on this research comes from Kurdik, who wrote, In my opinion, a better model to study this would be to have government run by children aged 10 to 15, with all the employees still being adults. I think there are a fair few people out there who believe that in that circumstance, the results might be better than what we have. But anyways, guys, that is the new super alignment research. I'm glad to see things coming out of this section of OpenAI, and I'm looking forward to more experiments and research to come. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.